Good evening and a very warm welcome to Radio and Television Tonga News Package for the hour. Looking at today's top stories, Ministry of Health highlights the importance of advising pregnant teenagers that they still have a better future. The Marupoi's High School welcomed Prime Minister Hoakawa Meiliku, a former proxy exercit of the school. And people of Neotoptapu are ecstatic to, to celebrate the new vessel once it arrives in the country tomorrow. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin, including the latest sports news to wrap up by your latest weather update. Now for the stories in detail. It is vital to take good care of pregnant teenagers to ensure they are healthy and well when giving birth. This was the main focus during the Ministry of Health recent radio program. Alice the Boat accepted story. During the program, the senior nurse of the maternity ward at Viola Hospital, Sister Daina Balaki, said they have noticed that many young women below 20 visit them to receive a pregnancy test and if they are really young, they call their parents to advise them of their child. Sister Balaki advises young mothers to stay positive because pregnancy isn't at the end of their lives and she adds that it is the best if their family offers by taking care of the baby, so they will both have a better future. The ministry also advises pregnant teenagers to avoid visiting the clinic only once, but instead to visit regularly. The ministry always tries to find pregnant teenagers that only visit the clinic once to follow up and check up on the mother and the baby. The medical superintendent of the labor ward, Dr. Maake Dubo, explained four methods on how they take care of uh, pregnant teenagers and their babies. Firstly, they advise pregnant teenagers about ways to deal with the disadvantages of being pregnant at a young age. Secondly, they screen and identify whether the baby puts the mother's health at risk. Third is to treat pregnant teenagers for diseases before labor and fourth is to assist parents with family planning. It has been witnessed worldwide that pregnant mothers must visit clinics four times or more, so the four purposes that he talked about can apply. Most mothers don't visit when they are 14 weeks into pregnancy or trimester, so he is advising mothers to have their checkup early so they can easily identify the exact date they'll give birth. Some pregnant teenagers are visited after five months of their pregnancy or 20 weeks in, and it is hard for them to scan the baby and identify the date for giving birth. Reporting for Radio and Television Tonga News, I'm Ali Sitopo. The Honourable Prime Minister was warmly welcomed to the Timaru Boys High School campus in New Zealand, 30 years since he graduated and became a proxy exercise of the school in 1988. During his visit, Honorable Hoakav Miliko acknowledged the significant role that Timaru and Timaru Boys High School played in shaping him into who he is today. Mark Ake with the details. Honorable Hoakav Miliko, who attended Timaru Boys High School in 1988, addressed about 150 guests recalling fond memories and expressed his amazement at how much the Tongan community has grown in South Canterbury. He added he remembers seeing snow for the first time and going skiing at Mount Cook and playing in his first 15 rugby team and was runner-up for Ducks. Meanwhile, the principal of the school, Dave Forbes, said there were at least 50 Pacifica students enrolled this year. There was a Tongan group of students that performed the kapahaka for the Prime Minister. Tongan Society South Canterbury General Manager Sinalatu said it was their intention to have the kids run the day with a mako dance from the society's male youth. A taolunga from the young girls and a song with all the children. Three of the society's youth were emceeing between the speeches of Ron Kali College Deputy Head Boy Petelo Fanla, Timaru Christian School Year 10 student Ulukilu Petea Langi, and Timaru Boys High School's Stephen Latu, who are Meriku's old rugby coach Grant McFarlane and fellow first 15 players from 1988 were also in attendance. 
The people of the two newest are ecstatic in receiving the newly commissioned vessel Koikele Sipe and they plan to celebrate the occasion next week. Radio and television Tonga Stringer from New Atoptapu, Lowina Pongi, says today the Koikele Sipe vessel first travelled from New Atoptapu to the two newest to ship the essential needs. The voyage will take three days and the vessel will travel back to Tongatapu before departing again next Tuesday to the two newest for their celebration. Lawina Pongi reports the Falihau district will host the celebration on Thursday, while Vaipoa district will celebrate it on Friday, and Hifo district will be the last district to celebrate. Tonga Police Safety Officers' skills will be more improved in tactical communication, risk assessment, planning and decision-making around the appropriate force in response to risk incidents after completing the officer safety project. Alice Tupo has more. The training was conducted by Tonga Police Always Trainers, who successfully completed a train and a trainers qualifying a course delivered by New Zealand Police in May 2021. The Always project, administered under the Tonga New Zealand Policing Program, has seen more than 100 frontline police officers from Tongatapu, Hapai, and Vavau undertake and complete officer safety training. Frontline police officers in Ewa are next in the training plan and the two newest are scheduled to follow. Tonga police believes that with trained and appropriately equipped frontline officers come reduced potential injuries and improved safety level for frontline officers, members of the public and offenders alike. Reporting for Radio and Television Tonga News, I'm Ali Sitopo. Sports is up next with Mark Ake, brought to you with thanks to the kind sponsorship of Pacific Timber and Hardware. Welcome back to Netball. The Tongan Tala is on its way to the 2023 Netball World Cup in South Africa. After another massive win in the Oceania qualifiers, at the Vodafone Arena in Suva last night, where the Dallas thrashed Papua New Guinea 89 points to 28. The win comes at the back of a big 59 to 29 thrashing of the Fiji Pearls the day before, and the 69th 52 victory over Samoa on Tuesday. Even though Tonga still has one more fixture, they have secured their spot at Cape Town and chasing its first international ranking. Just like their matchup against the Fiji Pearls, Tonga only allowed six goals to the Pepes while it nailed 30. Tonga furthered its lead to 53 at halftime, while Papua New Guinea managed to slot in another 6. There was no stopping them from there, finishing the third quarter at 72 to 19. Another 17 goals in the final quarter put icing on the cake for the ladies in red. The PNG Pepes has lost its chances after three consecutive losses. In an earlier match, Samoa defeated Cook Islands 54 points to 35. Samoa and the Pearls will face off at 8.30 p.m. for a battle that will likely determine which team takes the second spot to South Africa. Meanwhile, Tonga will take on the Cook Islands tonight at 6.30. That wraps up this evening's news package, but before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. Ministry of Health highlights the importance of advising pregnant teenagers that they still have a better future. Timor Boys High School welcomed Prime Minister Huakabumi Liku, a former proxy exercise of the school. And the people of Nuatoptapu are aesthetic to celebrate their new vessel once it arrives in the island tomorrow. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Rafa Nobopola. Have a good evening.